Hey guys, this is Mr. Bennett, and this is video 8-2. We're going to talk about molecular structure. In particular, we need to look at how we draw molecules, how we actually figure out uh, the interaction between the atoms. So to do that, we need to do a little bit of review to begin with. Uh, we need to compare a formula unit to a molecular formula. What's the difference? Well, formula units, uh, we use these for ionic compounds. Okay, and uh, this is something that we did last unit. What a formula unit does is it gives you the smallest ratio of ions in a salt crystal. Uh, basically things that are held together by electrostatic force. Okay, so for example, if you had sodium chloride, or maybe another example would be magnesium chloride, okay, these are formula units. And what they tell us is the ratio of sodium to chlorine, meaning this would be one to one, or magnesium to chlorine, which would be one to two. So if you had 50 sodiums, you'd have 50 chlorines. If you had 20 magnesiums, you'd have to have 40 chlorines. So it's not telling you the exact number that you have, it's simply telling you that the ratio in your compound, in your sample of the compound, will be one to one or one to two. For molecular formulas, it's different. The molecular formula tells you the exact number of atoms in a molecule. For example, water is always two hydrogens bonded to one oxygen. Carbon dioxide is always one carbon bonded to two oxygens. Never any more, never any less. Okay, it's always one carbon bonded to two. All right, and so for molecules, they're held together by covalent bonds and these occur between two non-metals. So when you're trying to figure out if something is covalent or ionic, covalents are always non-metal bonded to non-metal. Okay, and the last idea here is that uh, Lewis dot structures, so for example, hydrogen with one dot or something like oxygen with six dots, remember the dots represent the valence electrons, um, these Lewis dot structures are able to depict, meaning they're able to show the sharing of electrons in covalent bonds. That's the whole purpose of Lewis dot structures, is to show that sharing. So let's see what that looks like, or at least let's talk about the rules of what that looks like. So the first rule is that each atom wants eight valence electrons. That, that's what we call our octet, right? And it wants that in its valence. The exception would be two elements, hydrogen and helium. And the reason why is that they're both in the first energy level. And when you're in the first energy level, that means you only have one sublevel. So they only have an S sublevel. And that S sublevel only holds two electrons. So for them, their octet is really just two electrons because that's all it takes to fill their valence energy level. Okay? So they don't need eight, they just need two. Everything else wants eight. Now, next idea is that if there are more than two atoms in the molecule, the least electronegative one goes in the middle. So if you have, uh, if we use my example here of X's and Y's, if you have uh, something that says like, I don't know, you have like a Y and four X's, well, the Y is gonna go in, uh, and let's say the Y has the least electronegative value, then the Y is gonna go in the middle, and then your X's go on the outsides. Oops, that's supposed to be an X, there we go. And so maybe an X right here, and maybe you'll put an X up here. But the idea is the least electronegative one always goes in the middle of the molecule. The next idea is that electrons are gonna be expressed in dots, okay? Just because it's Lewis dot, okay? So you use dots to represent electrons. And then the last rule is that pairs of electrons around only one atom are called lone pairs and then pairs of electrons in between two atoms are called bonding pairs, okay? And they represent covalent bonds, easy enough. So what do those look like? Okay, well lone pairs, those would be these guys, okay? Notice how they are next to one atom but they're not in between the atoms, okay? On the other hand, your bonding pair is right here, okay? So bonding pair is in between the two atoms. This is These are the electrons that are being shared and are creating this bond, okay? So we've got the rules now. So the next idea is we wanna do a little bit of practice. So let's start off with something easy like water, okay? So the first thing we do is we draw the Lewis dot, okay? So we'll start with our hydrogens. We have one hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence. Draw the other hydrogen, I'm gonna put it over here. It has one valence. Now let's do the oxygen. We're gonna put that in the middle. Okay, you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but I'm doing it this way to kind of make things a little bit just 
easier and pretty for this first drawing. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and uh, we'll go five and six, okay? So six valence electrons, we've got our dots. How many total, total valence electrons do we have? We have six here, seven, and eight. So, so eight valence electrons, okay? Now, when you're trying to figure out how these are gonna bond up, what you're gonna look for are these electrons that are all by themselves, the single electrons. A single electron represents an opportunity to form a bond. So hydrogen has one single electron, oxygen has two. You're gonna take single electrons and you're gonna pair them up together. So this right here can form a bond. Now, at this point, this hydrogen is happy because he has one, two electrons at his disposal. And remember, hydrogen only needs two electrons to have its octet. So this hydrogen's fine. He doesn't want to form any more bonds. He's perfect. He's got his octet. He's happy. This hydrogen, on the other hand, still only has one valence electron. And as luck would have it, this oxygen also has one single electron here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pair those up. Okay, and there's another bond. Now this hydrogen has its octet, the two electrons it wanted, and then if we look at the oxygen, notice the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it now has its octet as well. Let's look a little further here. It says uh, how many shared pairs of electrons do we have? Well, here's a pair that's being shared, and here's a pair that's being shared. So that's two shared pairs, and then how many unshared pairs? Well, we have one here and one here, so that would be two as well. Notice these are pairs, so if we add these two together, that's four pairs or eight total valence electrons, okay? Now, we wouldn't leave it this way, this is kind of messy, so what we'd actually do is we would draw our oxygen, like so. Let's put our lone pairs in first, so here and here, and here and here, and then I would take these shared pairs, I'd put here and here, okay? And then this shared pair here, I would put here, in between the hydrogen and the oxygen. So they're in between, so we know these are involved in a bond, and the ones that are not in between, these are, they belong to the oxygen, they're not part of a bond, okay? All right, so that's an example. Let's look at another one. This one's a little bit more complicated. We have a carbon bonded to four chlorines. So same start though. You started it exactly the same as we started over here. So that means that the first thing you do is you draw the Lewis dot for each of the atoms. So first of all, we have our carbon. Okay, carbon has four valence electrons, so that's one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then we have our chlorines. Chlorines have seven valence electrons, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have four of them, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll draw another one down here. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'll draw one more up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, not the prettiest chlorines, but we get the picture. Okay, so just like before, we're gonna look for single electrons because those represent opportunities for bonding. Okay, so single electron here. Chlorine only has one single electron. Carbon, on the other hand, has four. So what that means is carbon has the ability to form four bonds. Chlorine only has the ability to form one bond because it only has one single electron. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna pair it up with this guy here, okay? This chlorine over here, I'm gonna take its single electron and I'm gonna pair it up right here. This chlorine, I'm gonna take its single electron and pair it up right here. And this chlorine, its single electron is gonna get paired up right here. So what we've done is we've formed four covalent bonds each chlorine, by bonding to these, gains its eighth electron, or its octet. And then carbon, on the other hand, which had four valence, is gonna bond to four different substances to pick up those other four valence electrons. Four plus four, again, will give it its octet as well. Okay, so if we were to redraw this in a nice clean way, we would simply put the carbon in the middle. We'd have these electrons around the outside, which give it its octet. Okay, these are the, those shared pairs, and on the outside of each one, we would have the chlorines. Okay, so notice that in each case, the chlorines have three lone pairs, meaning pairs that are not involved in bonding, and then they have one bonding pair each. Okay, and last but not least, this guy over here. So if we do our counting, it says how many total valence electrons do we have? Well, each chlorine had seven, so seven times four chlorines gives us 28 right? Then the carbon had four, so that gives us a total of 32. 
Well, how many shared pairs do we have? We have one, two, three, four. Okay, they, the shared pairs, are in the middle. They're in between the carbon and the chlorines. So that's four shared pairs. Okay, unshared pairs, we have three for each chlorine, right? One, two, three. So that's three, six, nine, and 12. Okay, if you want to check your math, you add these two together, that's 16. Okay, these are pairs, so if we double. Last thing I want to mention, I know you have other problems on your uh, handout. You can do those on your own and then check your answers in class. Um, but the last idea that I want to point out is, um, so far we've been talking about Lewis dot structures. And they all contain dots, right? Dots everywhere for electrons. You can take it a step further and you can draw what's called a structural formula. The only difference is that instead of drawing dots to represent the bonds, we then turn the bonds into a dash or a line. So each dash is going to represent two electrons, the two electrons that are those that bonding pair. Okay? The unshared electrons are still just going to be dots. Okay? So all we're doing is we're turning the shared electrons into lines. So let me give you an example. We did oxygen or er, er, uh, water earlier, right? So we have water and an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, actually bonded to two hydrogens, and then remember the oxygen has two lone pairs. Okay, so there's our water from earlier. If we're gonna draw this as a structural formula, all we do, we take our oxygen, we still put our lone pairs on the outside, but then these shared pairs, they're gonna show up as a line. So I simply just draw a line to represent the bond. You just have to remember that every line represents two electrons. So think of an electron being there and there on either end of the line. Okay, so that's the end of our notes. Make sure that you complete your whisk and make sure you complete those practice problems. We'll see you tomorrow.